Alright guys, in this video we're going to talk about our signaling system a little bit. And we're going to talk specifically about our block detectors. And we'll watch this train come out of the control point here. We'll watch the signal on the right change as the train clears the block. We'll go from red to green. And there's another train on the layout on the other track. If you watch the signal on the left, you'll see it change also. The last car on this train is equipped with an EOT from Ring Engineering. So we have some draw on the rear of the train. There goes the left signal. And there goes the right signal. Our block detectors work on current draw. Not only are they sensitive enough to pick up the end of train device, they will also pick up a wet finger laid across the tracks. As a matter of fact, when our scenery guy wets the ballast to touch it up, it will also pick up the moisture from this wetting solution. This is over in Parkersburg and we'll watch the train knock the signal down. There it goes. Alright, this is over in Rennell Junction. We'll watch this signal get knocked down from green to red. And the, in addition to being tied into the blocks, it's also tied into our turnout. So I'm going to throw a turnout here. And we'll watch the signals change when the switch is thrown. Right now I just lined it up for the yard lead. Now I'm going to turn it back. There it goes. And this is one of our six channel signal boards and we'll uh, watch one of the occupancy lights light up. There you go. That means we have a train in the block. Here's one of our four channel boards and there's the occupancy light again. We have two of these four channel boards on the layout and four of the six channel boards. All right, now for some boring technical stuff. This is the basic electronic circuit for our block detectors. Now the circuit here represents one channel of our block detectors. So on the six channel board, we would actually have this circuit built six times, one for each channel. And likewise on the four channel board, we'll have this circuit built four times, one for each of the four channels. The circuit's not that complicated, the only thing it does is output a ground signal when it sees current draw on the tracks. That ground signal is used to drive the relay logic boards and eventually drive the signal outputs. This is not a circuit that we designed. This is a circuit that somebody else designed that we found on the internet. And there will be a link in the description so you can build your own. Okay, this is sort of a blueprint for our six channel board. This is the top side or the component side and it shows the connection points between the components and it shows the terminal block on the top and what connections they go to. Here's the back side of that same board again showing the wire points between the components. Now keep in mind these are all hand built about 20 years ago by one of our club members. Here's a photo of one of our six channel boards Here's a photo of our one of our other six channel boards. And finally, here's one of the two four channel boards. Okay, here's an up close view of one of our four channel boards. Easy way to tell this is one of our four channel boards. You see the four bridge rectifiers along with the four output indicators. Here's the back side of the board. You can see all the point to point wiring. Keep in mind our signal guy had to sit here and wire all this by hand. And finally we're going to show you how we went from this to this. This border will be a direct replacement for our six channel boards and an upgrade for our four channel boards. This is a much more professional board and now I'm going to show you the assembly process. Before we start the assembly process let's go over some of the components. We have the integrated circuits in the plastic anti-static tube at the top. Then we have the bridge rectifiers. Then the terminal blocks. 
Over on the left side we have all the resistors laid out and the LEDs and uh, next we have the capacitors, the adjustment potentiometers, the terminal blocks again for some reason and finally the transistors. And just like that, all the resistors are installed. There's all the solder connections on the back side. One thing I really didn't mention, we have uh, test points to populate. I added these test points to make any future diagnosing easier. All they're going to be is just little loops of wire that we can hook up test leads to. And this is a component lead from the resistors we just installed. Using a pair of needle nose pliers, I'm simply going to make a U-shaped out of the lead. Then we're going to stick it in the hole for each test point. We'll go ahead and solder it up. Here's how we use the test points. You just take a spring clip and hook it on there. And you can also do the same thing with an alligator clip. They're convenient when there's a problem with the board and you need to check your inputs and outputs. We now have all the resistors in, all the LEDs in, and all the test points, and we're going to move on to installing the integrated circuits. Doesn't matter which way they go in, just have to line the marks up on the diagram versus the pin 1 designation on the chip, and we'll repeat the process for all of them.
all of the integrated circuits have been installed. Next component to go in are the six potentiometers to adjust each channel sensitivity. It's just a three pin component, only goes in one direction. Next up are the six output transistors. Again, it's a three pin component. All you have to do is match the outline on the board with the outline of the component. Just kind of get one leg in one hole and kind of spread them over into the other holes. Then push them down about two thirds of the way. Next are the capacitors. Be sure to observe the polarity. The long lead is positive. All of the capacitors are in. Time to do the terminal blocks. All the terminal blocks have been installed. Now it's time to install the bridge rectifiers. Make sure the positive lead goes in the positive hole. All the components are in and it's that easy. We now have a fully assembled six channel block detector board ready to be installed on the club's layout. At last, here it is installed on the club's layout. If you notice, LED number six is lit up, indicating that there's a train in that block. Scott is topside putting a train together in preparations for shooting another video. Here is the other side of that same panel. On the left we have one of the brand new block detector boards and right next to that on the right is one of the original block detector boards. It's amazing the difference between the two boards and they're functionally the same. Well that's it for this video. We'd like to thank each and every one of you for taking the time to watch this. If you found this video interesting or useful, please feel free to give us a like and subscribe. On behalf of the club, I'd just like to thank everybody for your support on YouTube. 
we can't believe how well this channel is doing and how much it has grown. We owe it all to you guys. Thank you very much.